Welcome to the Gardener's Corner program. I am Jennifer Brown, Family Consumer Science Extension Agent with the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service in person in Granville Counties. I help teach food and nutrition to both counties and I help provide information about food safety, about health and wellness, about eating right, being physically active, as well as teach programs towards people who are suffering from a chronic illness such as diabetes and heart disease. As we get to the end of February, we have celebrated Heart Health Month this past February. And we've hopefully provided you with information about how to be healthier for your heart. We had a lunch and learn session this um, past month about heart health and specifically what you can do to be healthier. One in three women die from heart disease and in fact heart disease is the number one killer of both men and women. Oftentimes when we ask people they would say cancer kills more people when in fact it's heart disease. And heart disease and diabetes are very closely linked. In fact a lot of people suffering from diabetes end up dying from heart disease complications whether it's a heart attack or stroke or other issues going on. So we want to provide you information because heart disease can affect anyone, anywhere, anytime. We have a lot of information here at our office about how you can get pumped up about heart health. It talks about how heart disease works, some of the risks for heart disease, how you can eat smarter to prevent heart disease in you or someone that you love. We specifically talk about cholesterol and blood pressure, but also remembering the importance of physical activity. A lot of people aren't sure about the symptoms of heart disease. We have a little bookmark here to kind of help provide information to that. You may experience chest pain, pressure, squeezingness, some kind of tightness in your pain or center in the chest. You can also get discomfort in other parts of your body, whether it's your neck, one or both of your arms, even your, your jaw or your stomach or your back. You can experience shortness of breath, break out into cold sweats, experience nausea or lightheadedness. So there's a lot of different things that can um, you know, be symptoms of heart disease. And unfortunately, it affects women oftentimes worse than men because women tend to experience these symptoms but kind of ignore them or chalk them up to uh, just you know women issues or something like that. So if you're experiencing any symptoms that you um, can cause you pain or discomfort or uh, displeasure, it could be symptoms of something bigger and something worse. So make sure you're talking to your doctor and you're not just forgetting about it or oh it went away or whatever. It could be an early warning sign um, because oftentimes women when they experience heart health issues and they ignore it, they can, um, you know, it can kind of come to a boiling point very quickly and they don't recover from it because women tend to, I think we're taking care of so many other people that we kind of tend to put our own health to the side and we want to make sure that you're taking care of you because if you're not taking care of you, then you're not going to be here to help anyone else. So if you missed our heart healthy workshop this past month and you'd like information, you can always contact the Extension Office or check us out on Facebook at Person Granville FCS. We try to post a lot of things on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube and to provide information to the community. So we have a variety of different recipes, we have uh, flyers about our upcoming programs, fact sheets and just other resources or links to other websites such as the American Heart Association. My kids who are um, in school are often every year this time of year it's a jump rope for heart fundraiser. It's to raise money for the American Heart Association. So if you know a kid they probably have that going on at their school right now but you can always go on to heart.org and make a donation for the American Heart Association to help them with research. And um, talking about heart disease and, and diabetes always reminds me to, to tell you about other programs that we have coming up. Um, we offer a diabetes prevention program here at the Extension Office. This is a program that we do in collaboration with the Person County Health Department. 
We don't have our class going on right now, but we are looking to start promoting this in the next month or so. So if you're interested, if you have pre-diabetes or you think you might be at risk for diabetes, you can always contact the Extension Office and ask about our Diabetes Prevention Program. This is a 28 session program that is spread out through an entire year where we meet weekly for 16 weeks and then we meet twice a month and then once a month. And throughout that entire program, we provide uh, information about um, counting your, your calories, about the importance of, of exercise, about um, eating the my plate, reading nutrition labels, and so much more. And we often have a lot of good results from that program because one of the things that we want our participants do, to do is to reach two goals by the end of the program. The first goal is to be achieving their required or recommended amount of physical activity. Adults are supposed to get 30 minutes of physical activity five days a week for a total of 150 minutes for an entire week. So by the end of the program, we want them to definitely be achieving that goal, if not going even further and getting more exercise. The second goal of our Diabetes for Prevention Program is to lose 5 to 7% of your weight. So that means when you come to class, we weigh you on our scale every time you come to class because we want to give you a starting weight and at the end of the, the class we want an end weight. And we want that difference to be 5 to 7 percent. So what that basically means is someone who weighs 200 pounds, by the end of the program we want them to have lost 5 percent, which is 10 pounds. That might not seem like a lot, but just losing even that much weight can make a big difference for your overall health and wellness. Um, we've had people, you know, being able to get off a variety of different medications and just feeling better about themselves, getting them back into that routine of physical activity, and it provides a social network to talk with other people who are experiencing diabetes or diabetes-related symptom. Because like heart disease, diabetes can affect you from your head to your toe. It could cause diabetic retinopathy, you know, problems with your eyes. You can definitely have heart health issues. You can um, experience uh, gout. You can experience kidney failure. Uh, you're definitely, of course, you know, having high blood sugar, which is, um, could cause nausea or lightheadedness or, or all kinds of, of different feelings. You could have inflammation in your joints. You can even lose a uh, toe because you're, you, know, you lose the sensation, uh, the feeling in your extremities, in your fingers and your toes, and oftentimes it might get bad enough to where you get a cut or a wound on your foot and you don't realize it's there because diabetes has robbed you of that ability to really feel your toes and to feel that an infection is growing and that it's getting worse. And unfortunately, you know, we've had people even um, lose you know, feet to diabetes or not be able to drive because they've completely lost their vision. So we want to prevent diabetes. So our diabetes prevention program is just that. It's to prevent people from getting diabetes. So it's not for people if you already have been diagnosed with diabetes. We do have other programs that you are uh, able to participate in. And in fact, we've got a take control program that we're going to be offering virtually on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and that's going to start Wednesday, April 7th. Our Take Control program is to help you take control of your chronic disease, whether that's diabetes, whether it's um, you know heart disease or something else that you might be experiencing. And that is an eight-week program. Every uh, week for one hour we're going to have a, a workshop and a lesson through our Zoom class and we're going to provide information um, about a lot of different things, you know, about uh, moving more and being physical act physically active. We're going to talk about the three uh, evils uh, in our food, specifically we call it the evil trifecta, our fats, our sodiums, and our sugars. These are the reasons that we have increased to get, um, we have increased our weight over the years, is we're getting too much of the bad stuff. So we're going to talk about those things, you know, three of the different weeks. We're also going to talk more about the things that you need more of, such as your fruits and veggies, such as your whole grains and more fiber in your diet, such as the, the more physically active. We're also going to provide you information on how to make an action plan. Action plans are something that we recommend in pretty much all of the programs that we teach. 
An action plan is simply that. It is a plan of action for the week. We just want small, short-term goals, something that you can achieve from this Wednesday to next Wednesday, something that, that you are actually an action you're going to take. So not a, I'm going to lose weight, because that's not an action that you're taking. I'm going to be physically active. That may result in you losing weight, but the action is being active. The action is you know, drinking more water, eating more fruits and veggies, um, you know, uh, those kinds of things are actions that we want you to take and we teach you how to take those actions how to make short-term specific goals we call them smart goals we want them to be specific measurable achievable realistic and timely that's what the acronym smart stands for so this is something that you can do without even coming to any of our classes um, you can make smart goals um, short-term goals from this week to next week so for example, my goal may be if I'm having problems you know, being physically active, that might be my goal that I want to focus on. So as specific and measurable as I can get my action plan to be, the more beneficial and the more uh, likely I am to achieve it. So I would say instead of just I'm going to be physically active or I'm going to exercise this week, that's a very generic, broad goal. I don't know any details about what do you mean you're going to exercise. You know, if I got up and walked in place for five minutes, that's exercise. You already achieved your goal for the week. So we want you to, to be a little bit more specific. So, and again, always work towards getting that recommended 150 minutes of activity or physical activity per week. So my goal might be I'm going to exercise 30 minutes three days this week. Okay, so I got a little bit more specific, you know, I said how often, you know, the amount of time and the amount of days that I'm going to exercise, but I didn't tell you what I'm going to do, <clears throat> and I didn't tell you specifically days that I'm going to do it. So I'm going to exercise three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday on my treadmill. That's a very specific goal. And that's something that you can do at your own home to help improve your health and your wellness over the next couple of months. because. We celebrate Heart Health Month in February. We're going to celebrate National Nutrition Month in March. So more about that in just a minute, but we want to take a quick break and get a word from one of our sponsors. Even though the calendar says it's February, we all know that spring 2021 is not far behind. There's plenty of time now to come to T.G. Brooks Company and get some sound advice for your lawn preparation coming up soon. They have had so much experience, so why not let the professionals work with you on your spring lawn and garden planning? They serve homeowners all over Person County and surrounding counties. They will tell you all about the advantages of pre-emergent weed control or weed and feed. You want to be sure to perk up your lawn with fertilizer, lime, and weed control to get your lawn off to a proper spring start this year. To beautify your flower garden and shrubs around the home, T.G. Brooks Company carries hardwood as well as dyed mulches, and they do deliver. Yes, sir, they do deliver. They'll sell it to you by the scoop or the bag, too. They feature all of the popular lawn and garden chemicals and treatments, insecticides, herbicides, and they always carry soils like topsoil, bulk planting soil, potting soil, cow manure, and pine needles to make your place look really sharp. They have the equipment for sale or rent like spreaders, power pluggers, and lots of lawn and garden tools as well as wheelbarrows. They have stepping stones and wall stones, and before you know it, it's going to be March. They'll have all of your flower garden and vegetables and your garden supplies. When it comes to beautification, come in today and talk over your plans. Let us remind you that T.G. Brooks Company has your water heater elements, thermostats, and pressure relief valves. They have your Taylor wood stove parts and comfort glow heaters for extra warmth. Person County and surrounding areas count on T.G. Brooks Company, serving the homeowner, farmer, and construction worker since 1936. Phone them anytime at 364-2428. Welcome back to the Gardener's Corner program. Again, I am Jennifer Brown, Family Consumer Science Agent with the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service in Person and Granville Counties. Before the break, we talked about February as Heart Health Month. We kind of talked about how that can also affect you and increase your risk for diabetes because heart disease and diabetes are very closely linked. 
And it's, those are very important things that we want to continue to talk about because as we head into March next week, March is National Nutrition Month. We still have a couple of these healthy and homemade calendars at the Extension Office. So if you don't have a calendar for 2021, stop by the office and get one. Even if you don't need a calendar, it has, um, each month has recipes, it has a picture of it, but it also has a recipe card here and um, nutritional information about that, as well as um, this calendar was made by Iowa State University, and they have a Spin Smart website that has so many more recipes. So if you want some recipes for 2021 that will help you be healthier and maybe prevent diabetes or decrease your risk for heart disease, check out uh, this Healthy and Homemade calendar and it's available at both our Person and Granville Extension offices. Uh, in Person County you can come to room 123 and pick one up or they're outside my office room 149 just on the main floor of the extension office and the Granville County office they're just on the table out front at the door so stop by at the extension office and pick one up so during the month of March we are going to continue to put out information about nutrition we do it throughout the entire year but I think we push a little bit more in March because it's National Nutrition Month and we want you to eat healthier. So our first Lunch and Learn, we're gonna have two this month. Our Lunch and Learns are offered right now virtually on the second and fourth Tuesday of every month. So we have two a month that you can participate in. One of them is typically always around just you know basic food and nutrition. The other one might be kind of um, you know a different health and wellness or something agriculture related, um, but we always offer these these programs free of charge virtually through Zoom right now and um, you can go on to our extension website or you can just check out our Facebook page at Person Grandel FCS. I've got all the flyers, the registration links, everything that you want to know about all of our upcoming programs there on our Facebook page. And if you are on uh, social media we are on Facebook, Instagram, and even YouTube at Person Granville FCS. Be sure to like and follow our pages or subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos, uh, informational videos, as well as recipe videos. So during March, our first Lunch and Learn is going to be Tuesday, March 9th. And it's going to be on the topic of how to personalize your plate. Every year, the um, Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics puts out a theme for the month of March. So this year's theme is personalize your plate. I believe um, the uh, last year's was eat right bite by bite or, or something like that. So this is the my plate. Okay, this is just the generic my plate. This is kind of a, a kids fun kids version of it. But we want to teach you information about the my plate, but also how to personalize your plate because we're all different. Some of us have different cultures and we just eat different types of foods or there might be something that your culture um, doesn't eat. It could be that you have chosen a specific diet that you're trying to you know, stick with or it could be just for health reasons your doctor wants you to avoid something. So we understand that you need to personalize your plate but the overall my plate is, you know, is this right here. Half of the plate is supposed to be fruits and veggies. So I know oftentimes we tend to put more preference or emphasis on that protein section. You know, you always decide what meat you're going to have. Probably because it takes more time to thaw it than it does anything else. You know, more time to prep it as well. But this is where you should be putting your emphasis. This is only a fourth of your plate. This is half of your plate, okay? Um, so what fruits and veggies are you going to have tonight? Then you can decide what meat goes with that. Or you can even not have meat. I um, am constantly reminding people, and I'm a meat lover, so I'm, I'm not going to tell you to, to be a vegetarian. If that's what you choose, that's perfectly fine. But you still need protein, no matter what. So I don't look at what meat I'm going to have. I look at, does my plate have protein? So protein could come from, you know, eggs or uh, beans, like black beans, 
um, peanut butter or just you know nuts in general so there's a lot of different things even a lot of our dairy products give us protein some of our you know vegetables give you us protein so there's different ways to get your protein it, this is no longer the meat and beans category even though that's typically how we get our protein but focus on also this plate what do you notice about this plate it's very colorful almost like a rainbow we want you to eat a rainbow. We want your plate to be very bright, very colorful. If you are looking at your lunch or your dinner and your plate is very uh, bland looking, you know, it's just kind of meat, bread, and potatoes. It's very, you know, white and brown looking on your plate, then you're probably not getting the nutrients that you need because you're not eating a lot of good fruits and veggies. You're not getting maybe whole grains, which are good for you for, for fiber. Um, you might not be getting dairy products, and that could hurt you with calcium. If you're deficient in calcium, you can get osteoporosis as well. So there's a lot of different things going on with this plate, but we want you to, to personalize it. There are fruits and veggies that I like that my children do not, and vice versa. So we try to rotate it around. If you have children, you understand how picky and how difficult it can be um, to try to feed them. You also understand how they always want that meat, bread, and potatoes, specifically french fries. So um, they, my children know that they're not going to get that. That's kind of a, a, a treat. But they can help me plan the meal. It's very important to include kids in those decision-making uh, processes because they're more likely to eat it if they had a say in it if they helped it, even if it's to rotate around. I have three children, so trying to be fair to all of them. You know, one of them will pick what we're having Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night kind of a thing. And, um, and it rotates around. So, and um, when I ask them for, okay, give me a vegetable we can have to, tonight. If they say, you know, potatoes or, or corn, give me a non-starchy vegetable. Give me something, you know, green, something colorful. We can have that as well, but the, the starchy vegetables kind of fit more into the grain categories, especially if you're a diabetic. Um, you would count those vegetables as this category right here. It would be grain slash starchy vegetables. So the diabetic my plate looks a little bit different. So if you are suffering from diabetes or heart disease, your plate might look a little bit different than mine. If you need more information about how to uh, personalize your plate, uh, you can always attend our Lunch and Learn. Tuesday, March 9th at noon. We always uh, have been recording our Zooms for the past year. So if there's a topic that you're interested in, I very well might have already taught a workshop this past year, and I am able to share that recording with you if you'd like, as well as any of the handouts, recipes, or information as well. But when you're making decisions about your, your, your plate, one of the things too is the size of it. You know, if you look at the plate part just right here, if, you know, I took this part off, this is, you know, a, a fairly small plate. It's kind of what you might call a kid's plate. This is about the plate you should be eating on. This is the size plate that we used to eat on. But unfortunately, our plates got bigger and bigger. And we, in return, got bigger and bigger. So there's kind of a correlation there. So making a simple change in your cookware, you know, making it so you, you have smaller plates, smaller cups, smaller bowls, that will help you with your serving size. In some of our programs, we give these My Plates out to people, and they tend to just, well, I'll put this food, I can do it by this, but then they stack it up like this high. And I'm like, portion size. Your proteins should be about the size of the palm of your hand or a deck of cards. So remembering this when you're sitting down, it could be that you're eating perfectly fine. You know, what you're eating is okay, but maybe you're eating too much of it. Or we have some people that um, do really good with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then like right before bed is when they, they go get them a treat. Like they, I don't know if they're celebrating that they did good all day or if they're rewarding themselves or, or what they're doing or if they're just starving so much, I'm, I'm not sure. But um, if you're interested in trying to help personalize your plate, we have definitely have information. No matter your age, no matter your chronic illness that you're suffering from, just give us a call at the Extension Office. You can reach us here in Person County at 336-599-1195 uh, or in Granville County at 919-603-1350. But don't forget to check us out online at our Facebook page at Person Granville FCS. 
You can also find us on uh, Instagram and YouTube with the, the same handle at Person Granville FCS. Um, but one of the things when I teach nutrition to kids, I often have to remind them this plate right here doesn't uh, show soft drinks. It doesn't show sweet teas. It doesn't show coffee. It doesn't show you know any of those things. So remembering what you drink is very important. So rethink your drink. So on this plate that I give out to kids, it specifically says drink water here. Because oftentimes, whether you're an adult or you're a child, you're not getting enough water. And if you're not being hydrated, then that can cause you not to feel good. You know, it can cause you to almost feel hungry when you're really just thirsty. So next time you're feeling hungry, go grab a, a bottle of water, grab maybe a handful of nuts, those are a good protein source, you know, a handful of uh, carrots or grapes or, or something like that. Um, make sure that you're not eating out of the entire bag. We oftentimes, if you're going to snack, that's perfectly fine. I, I have, you know, I like potato chips and cookies just like everyone else, but making sure that you're watching that portion size. So if you have that big bag of chips, oftentimes we just reach in and we're just watching TV, you know, mindlessly eating away at, at our chips. And you don't realize that you just ate half the bag. So if you're going to buy that big bag of chips, get that bowl out or a plate or something and put a serving of chips on that plate. Wrap the bag up and put it up. Um, using uh, measuring cups, whether they're, they're liquid or they're um, solid, you know, measuring cups, dry measuring cups, making sure that you're measuring stuff. So it's cheaper if, if I want like a soft drink, it's cheaper for me oftentimes to buy the, the two liter than it is the, the cans. Um, but I have to be very careful not to drink too much of the two liter because the can, I can only pour whatever's in the can in my cup if I'm going to drink out of it. But if I have a bottle, I can pour that cup up as high as I want to. But a serving size is still 12 ounces. So I can get my liquid measuring cup and pour 12 ounces of my drink in here. And that way I'm watching my calories. Um, and even if it's a calorie free drink, even if it's a diet drink, I still want to make sure I'm not consuming too much of it because if this is all I'm drinking, am I getting any water? Because adults need about 64 ounces of water a day. So that is eight, eight ounces. Okay. So a normal water bottle is about 16 ounces. So about four of those water bottles a day is what you're supposed to, to take in. It will vary depending on the time of the, the year as well as how physically active you are. But drinking more water, watching your serving sizes, making your action plans that we talked about earlier in our program are things that you can do to, to be a little bit healthier. So we're going to take a brief break to hear from one of our sponsors and then we'll come back and we'll talk more about health and wellness and nutrition. Jason Acock Auctioneering NCAL 6679 announces an auction for Lake Ridge Farms and others to be held Saturday, March 6th at 10.30 a.m. at 1100 North Lake Road at Coastal Carolina Cotton Gin in Fairfield, North Carolina. For terms to see some of the items up for auction and more information, Visit JasonAcockAuctioneering.com or you can call Jason Acock at 919-495-0285. In-person bidding and also bidding available through proxy bid. Visit JasonAcockAuctioneering.com for more information. Up for auction, work and feel ready, tractors, combines, trucks, trailers, bulldozers, sprayers, and tillage equipment, Saturday, March 6th at 10.30 a.m., 1100 North Lake Road at Coastal Carolina Cotton Gin in Fairfield, North Carolina. Call Jason Acock at 919 Four nine five zero two eight five, or log on to Jason Acock Auctioneering dot com for more information. Welcome back to the Gardener's Corner. I'm Jennifer Brown. 
Family Consumer Science Agent with the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service. I help teach food and nutrition, health and wellness, and help people who have uh, chronic illness such as heart disease and diabetes. So we've been talking about Heart Health Month in February, and then we've been talking about National Nutrition Month in March. But any time of the year, it's important to talk about those issues. It's important to remember food safety. Whether you have been, you know, you've already celebrated your, your Super Bowl parties, maybe Valentine's parties, you might be uh, planning a, another party to watch some of the, the basketball games or different things like that. But making sure that you're, you're being food safe is, is important so that you're, you're washing your hands. This is important any time of the year. Whether it's a flu season, whether we're going through something like COVID, washing your hands is extremely important. And I think most of us as, a, as adults know, know how to do that. But I've noticed just even watching my children, you know, I've had to correct them. We're doing certain things, you know, whether it's just they, uh, you know, turn on the water before they even get their hands wet, they're going over there and getting, getting some soap. And they really need to get their, their hands uh, completely wet before they're, they're getting the soap so they can get that good lather because they're supposed to lather up uh, when they're washing their hands for about 20 seconds. That's what's really killing the germs. It's not uh, per se the, the soap. It's the soap combined with the actual scrubbing. So making sure that you're getting in between your fingers. If you're, you know, uh, females and you have long nails, making sure that you're getting underneath those nails. You might need a scrub brush to help you do that. Watching your wrists. A lot of times, especially if you wear a watch or if you wear a bracelet or sometimes I'll have a, a hair thing on or something like that. And you get a lot of germs that uh, build up right around that, that wrist. Uh, if you have any, uh, if you have any wrinkles, <laughs> you're more likely to get it uh, in there. Any calluses right around the edges, uh, you know, of your, your fingertips. Those are places that you can uh, carry germs. So making sure that you're, you're washing your hands uh, throughout the year no, no matter what. And that you're also using the proper tools. Um, with their, whether you're, you're being food safe or if you're uh, just trying to, to cook a nice meal, having cutting boards, measuring cups, these things help you stay food safe but also still help you stay healthy. So making sure I've got different colored cutting boards so I, I you know cut my raw chicken on one cutting board. I'm cutting my vegetables up on another cutting board. So having just the different colors of cutting boards can be very important to help um, stay healthy, to stay safe. And um, because it helps keep the separate, the raw products and the ready to eat products. So I'm not doing any cross contamination. My raw food is not touching my ready to eat food. But it's also important when we do talk about nutrition. And again, we will continue to do that throughout the month of March. To be healthier, one of the things that you can do is uh, to cook different. So it might be you have certain foods that you love and that you enjoy. You know, it might be certain vegetables or something like that. But is there a healthier cooking method that you could use? Maybe it's, um, you know, instead of frying everything, you're going to bake stuff. You're going to roast your, your veggies. You're going to grill out on, on the grill. I mean, you can cook any of your foods in these methods. I mean, I love, you know, grilling meat but I also love grilled vegetables. I love even, you know, I'll put pineapple or something on the grill and, and grill fruit out there as well. So there's a variety of different ways and cooking methods. And these different cooking methods can really help you. So we're gonna be having, um, coming up this spring, we're gonna have a Cook Smart, Eat Smart program. So this is kind of a basic cooking skills class. We are gonna do it virtually. Um, but hopefully that just means that you can cook along in your own kitchen or um, you can you know watch the videos if you can't attend the class live we can, we'll record our zoom and you can watch it when you can we're going to provide information we do have powerpoints and actual information to talk about the different cooking methods we'll talk about reading nutrition labels um, you know we'll talk about the different food groups the different equipment that you might need in your home and you know how to pick out a good knife what's to, important to keep in your pantry all of these things that's important to be healthy we will talk about in our cook smart eat smart program we will have some cooking so um, hopefully i'll be able to do some 
cooking demonstrations. Uh, they might not be uh, live because it might be easier if I, I tape record them so you can watch it. But we have been putting uh, or doing recording different cooking demonstrations of different recipes and we've been putting them on our YouTube channel at Person at Granville FCS so you can look for some of our food videos there. We also have um, videos that we just give you information about. So we're going to be providing a lot of information in our Cook Smart Eat Smart program. It's about an 8 to 12 hour class so we're going to spread it out over a couple of weeks and we're going to provide you with um, a nice uh, kind of a, a cookbook at the end of it. It has, uh, it's kind of like a magazine type thing. So it's got information about what to store in your pantry, about your proper knives, and it's got a lot of recipes in that book as well. So we're going to provide that to any of the participants that are in the person Granville County area. You can drop by the office and, and pick that up after our program. But if you're interested in our Cook Smart Eat Smart program, you can drop um, you know, a comment on our Facebook page Call the Extension Office in Person County at 336-599-1195 or the Granville County Extension Office at 919-603-1350. Um, to learn more about our Cook Smart, Eat Smart program that we're going to be doing in this spring, to sign up for any of our Lunch and Learns that we have on the second and fourth Tuesday of every month, to sign up for our Take Control of Your Chronic Disease Self-Management Program that we're going to be offering starting uh, Wednesdays in April for eight weeks. We have a lot of programs that, that we're doing right now. Even if we can't do them in person yet, we still want to provide information to you. So again, if you want to stop by and pick up a calendar at our Extension Office, please feel free to do that. Please contact us. Let us know if you need information. Um, we're happy to have, um, we always want ideas from people about what workshops you want. Um, our workshops always focus kind of on health and nutrition, but we had one recently that was about um, developing a household and food budget. So still kind of about what you need for your house or about food, but more about financial management. So a couple of programs that I want to tell you about is uh, our More in My Basket program. This is a program that we provide information out to the community either in a workshop, a booth setting, or we can give you a brochure about it if you might need food assistance. We have a lot of people that um, are food insecure. You know, they're having problems putting food on the table, especially during this pandemic. It's been difficult and even more, uh, you know, straining and stressful on our economy and on our families and our, you know, us as parents to put food on the table. So if you're struggling with that and you may think that you might qualify for food assistance, the More in My Basket program provides that information. You can um, go on to, we have a website called morefood.org to uh, check out the information. They have uh, a blog there so you can even see some of their, their recipes and they have a 1-800 number that you can call to see if you qualify for food assistance. In North Carolina, food assistance is through the Food and Nutrition Services Program. It's formally known as food stamps, um, so that might be what you're, you're most familiar with, but you can contact this 1-800 number and it'll put you in touch with our More In My Basket staff that is in, located in Raleigh. And they help you fill out an application to apply for food assistance. So that's not something that I do here locally at the office. I kind of just provide the information to get you in contact with our Raleigh office. But I also provide information about, um, you know, what you can get from the food and nutrition services. Some people are, are getting, you know, hundreds of dollars a, a month in food assistance. Some people are only getting $16 a month. And while $16 may not sound uh, like a lot to you, I know that I definitely would not turn down a $20 bill if somebody gave it to me every month by simply just filling out a, an application. So if you call this 1-800 number or go onto the website morefood.org, you can contact them and they will fill out the application for you. You know, getting your, your information, uh, asking you, you know, how much money you're making, what medical bills you have, you know, all kinds of, of different things. 
Majority of the people that receive food and nutrition services in North Carolina are uh, our children and our, our elderly. So, and we want to make sure that if you are in need food assistance that you can get the help that you need. And if you're not quite at that point, but you still want information about how to save more money, then again, we have uh, part of that program is to provide information of how to develop a household and food budget. And that was a workshop I taught recently that again, I can share the resources with you if you're interested in it. But we talked about making a budget. So the first thing when you're doing a budget is you need to sit down and you need to make a list. You can get a piece of paper or you can get kind of an actual like worksheet that we have available to provide of how to do a household budget. That's the first part is figuring out what expenses you have. You know, what do you spend your money on? So looking back maybe uh, over the past month of February, you know, if you have your receipts or if you put everything on a credit card or a debit card, you can look back through your bank records or your credit card records and see where you spent your money on stuff. And, you know, how much do you spend it on food? How much do you spend it on entertainment? Or how much do you spend on, you know, whatever else? And you fill out this worksheet that we have and uh, you're putting your expenses down. You're also putting in your revenue, how much money you're bringing in. So your revenue might be money that you're getting from a job. It could be money you're getting from unemployment, uh, child custody or alimony payments. If you're getting any food assistance or you know food nutrition services, you're getting money uh, on an EBT card. How much money you're bringing in every month versus how much you're putting out every month. Because that's basic budgeting for anyone is I need to spend less than I bring in, okay, less than I make. And if you can put that information down on a paper, then you know where to, to start. If you look at that and you're like, wow, I spend a lot of money on food. And food is one of the biggest things a lot of people spend money on, especially during this pandemic. You know, my children have been home a lot more. And instead of getting, you know, food, uh, breakfast or lunch at their school, they're getting it at my house. So that means I have a higher food bill at my house this past uh, school year because my children are not in school. So making sure that you're, you're looking at that and then looking more specifically at the food budget. Were you eating out a lot? You know, were you going to the gas station all the time and getting you a little snack or going to the vending machine and getting you, you know, a bag of chips and a drink or a honey bun or something like that. If you're spending money on all of these extra little things, um, all these snacks and whatever else, you'll notice that when you're looking at your receipts. So if you didn't do a good job this past month keeping records, then just start that, okay? Over the next week, even if you just want to do it for a week, keep all of your receipts of everything you pay for, okay? Whether it's cash, check, card, you know, just keep all the receipts, okay? Add up all of those expenses for the week. Multiply that by four, because there's typically about four weeks in a month. That will give you an estimation of um, how much money you spend in a month, and specifically, you know, looking at food or looking at, you know, other expenses there. Um, but when it comes to, to food, it could be you're just eating too, you know, too much serving size. Even if you go out to a restaurant and they give you a big plate of food, you know, can you just eat half of it and then take the other half home for leftovers? There's a variety of different things you can you can do, but what you have to do first is to fill out the, the worksheet that we have or to keep track of this information. And from there on, you can use the resources that we have to help you provide information about, um, you know, eating right. Um, about eating right and about um, making sure that you are um, you know, eating healthy, but you're not eating too much. You're not spending too much money out to eat. So maybe you do go out to eat too often. Maybe even if you're gonna go out to eat, you can get, instead of like a combo, you're gonna get the kid's meal, just to save a little bit of money. Um, maybe you need more information on meal planning. That's a workshop that we've taught this past year. We teach every year. We can provide information about how to do a better job with planning your, your meals because that will save you money. Over the past two months actually now, that's something that my family have been doing. We uh, have you know refinanced the house and we're trying to save money so that we can pay uh, some of our bills down. You know, whether it's credit cards, whether it's a car bill or a house bill, we don't want uh, high interest rates 
you know, so we don't have a credit card with a high interest rate and then all we're doing every month is just paying off the interest. So we want to save money so we can pay off some of these, these bills, especially the credit cards that have high interest rates. Uh, maybe we want to put a, you know, a down payment on for a new vehicle. There's a variety of different things that you might be experiencing. So just like we talked about personalizing your plate, this is your budget, whether it's a household budget or a, a food budget. But we have uh, information here at the Extension Office to help you do just that, to help you do your, your food budget, to help you save money with your, uh, your serving size. So taking all of the information that I've talked about in the, this past hour and kind of putting it together, it all is interlinked. It could be you're not healthy because you're not eating you know, the my plate. It could be that you're eating too big of a plate and that's also increasing your food costs which is increasing and stressing out your, your budget. So we can give you information that can uh, decrease the amount of money that you're spending on food uh, as well as to help you eat healthier at the same time and that in turn will make you healthier so maybe decrease medical bills which helps your budget but also just uh, helps you live longer you know live a healthier life feel better about yourself and um, and your and your your family making sure that they're staying healthy I've talked about adults being healthy but we don't ever want to forget our kids and, and our families children are supposed to exercise 60 minutes a day every uh, or five days a, a, a week okay so children need double the amount of exercise so I know it's kind of been you know cold and, and dreary the, the past two months because it's winter time so what can you do to be more physically active with your with your family maybe it's doing stuff in that in the house so technology uh, is seen by many as a blessing and it's also seen by some as, as a curse but we want you to use technology to your advantage so I don't want you sitting down and watching a lot of TV okay we, we spend too much time sitting down and being sedentary and not active is a factor of you know something that will increase your risk of heart disease increase your risk of diabetes so get up and get moving so instead of sitting down and watching TV and mindlessly eating that bag of chips get up and get moving there's a lot of exercise videos whether it's just on you know you go on YouTube and the videos can be tailor-made to you personalize your plate personalize your exercise so if you need exercises for older adults, if you need chair exercises, if you need exercises to help with back pain, if you need, you know, if you want specific like types of exercises, like I want yoga or I want Pilates or uh, Tai Bo or, or something like that, all it's a simple search in, in YouTube to, to find some of these videos. But just simple walking videos, okay? So even if you want to watch TV, okay I'll get my iPad or my phone and pull up YouTube and I'll have my TV up there and I'm just walking in place I don't even need a, a video for that I can get up and just walk in place during a TV show during the commercials at least for an hour-long TV show commercials are about 20 minutes uh, or, or so so you can get 20 minutes of physical activity while you're watching your favorite one-hour show okay so putting these things together and doing them at the same time. But don't forget that uh, even if you can't get to a gym or you just don't feel comfortable getting out and, and about, there's a lot of resources online. The local Person County Parks and Rec Service also has uh, group fitness classes that you can do online. And, you know, and the, the, they're done through Zoom and the instructor, you know, you, you feel the burn by the, by the end of it. So also helping support our local businesses, whether it's, you know, a, uh, the Parks and Rec office, a local farmer, all of these things, because we're all suffering right now with the economy and the pandemic and how we can help our neighbor. Because February, in case you didn't know it, in addition to being Heart Health Month, is Random Acts of Kindness Month. So help a local farmer, help a local small business, help the local Parks and Rec office by joining one of their fitness classes. There's so many different things that we can do to help our community be healthier and be happier this year. I am Jennifer Brown, Family Consumer Science Agent with the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service, and I'd like to thank you for tuning in to today's Gardener's Corner program. 
Owl Pride Foods, makers of Owl Pride Premium Pimento Cheese Spread and Dip, is made in Roxboro. Pick up some the next time you're shopping at Hurdle Mills Market and Butcher Shop, North Main IGA, Supply Line Discounts in South Boston, Virginia, Food Lion, or Kenyon's Meat Market in Mebane. You can enjoy Owl Pride Premium Pimento Cheese Spread and Dip at Rock City Grill, Coles Pharmacy, Triss's Espresso, and Clarksville Station. Owl Pride Foods, makers of Owl Pride Premium Pimento Cheese Spread and Dip, remind you that goodness grows in North Carolina. Try the jalapeno added for extra flavor. That's Owl Pride Premium Pimento Cheese Spread and Dip.